Oh, we're good. We're live. Ooh, awesome. I hate driving. I hate it. When I moved to Seattle three years ago, I brought my car up from Phoenix. And as I'm navigating through the highways of Seattle, well, after I get off the one-way roads that blow my mind because I don't know where I'm going, I get on the highway, and I know where I want to go. I want to go out to Bellevue. I want to drive to Redmond, and I'm struggling. I'm driving down the road, and I know I have to make a right-hand turn at some point. And I'm struggling to get over, and the soccer mom's over here, and I'm just like trying to get. I'm like, let me just get over there. I can't merge, and everyone in Seattle doesn't know how to merge, and I don't understand. So I'm trying to get over, and then I miss the turn. And then, of course, I hear this. Re recalibrating, rerouting, please make the next legal U-turn. And I'm like, oh, great. Now I'm on the highway. I can't make a U-turn, so I have to get off the road. And then I have to somehow try to get all the way over to the left-hand side. And all I really want to do is wish that I could stop, back up, and get to where I wanted to go, right? I just wanted to get back to make that correct turn. And to me, navigation on a road is like navigation inside of our application where we don't want to confuse our users or make them get lost in the application, we want to ensure that we're navigating them and steering them in the correct direction. We don't want them to be puzzled and confused and look at it like a foreign object, right? So I want to talk about the state of navigation in Android because it's, it's a little tricky. Over the years, navigation paradigms have really shifted, uh, especially in Android itself. Uh, in iOS, it's been pretty, pretty easy, you just pop, Modal, that's it, it's your navigation paradigm. In Android, we might have a single screen, we might have multiple screens, we might have like a whole world of screens. So when, as developers, when we try to lay out our applications, we have to think, what's best for our users? How do we navigate them to the content that we want them to go to? So I have a few examples. Now all of these examples that I'm gonna show you, none of them are wrong. Some of them are better than others. Uh, but I just want to make sure that if you're doing stuff like this today, it's not bad, but we can improve it. We can make it better. Maybe you'll learn some tips of, of where you want to take your next application or transform your current application. So the first thing, this is, this is my first application I ever built in Xamarin three years ago. It's called uh, My Media Center. It's a list. I have all these navigation points. It's like a DVR remote control, and I have premieres, recordings, channels. I laid it out, and I said, I have all, just so many sections. I don't know where to put it. And this was three years ago on Android where fancy things didn't exist. The problem here with lists is I'm not really giving great information to my user. They have to dive down into each section. They want to find TV. They want to find movies. But it's simple. It's navigable. But it doesn't scale. If I was to take the same exact thing and put it on a 7-inch tablet, it's a lot of white space. Very early paradigm in Android was the dashboard. Uh, this was similar to a list, except for it's in a grid. Fantastic. And for developers, this made it really simple to say, hey, I have nine different sections of my application, put them in a nice grid view, some nice icons that my designers gave me, or I created myself, you know, and here they are. A few issues with this that I think out of the box is, what happens when I have more than nine sections, or six sections? Do I keep having them scroll down to the bottom of the page? And, and also, when you look at these pages, these are very popular applications, especially Yelp. Where is the information that's important to me right now? If, if I think of Yelp and I pull it out, they know my location. They know probably what I'm looking for. I'm assuming coffee. It's probably, if they have analytics, it's mostly coffee. Uh, but there's no information what's around me, what's good right now. But dashboards, they work. And they're easy. You get some icons. Tabs, they're extremely interesting. With words, without words, it doesn't matter. This is just the default contacts list that's in uh, KitKat. And it's simple, you have favorites, contacts, that's my family. I see a few familiar last names. My mom refuses for me to take a photo of her ever. So just nice K's that are good. So, so this is easy. You can swipe through small information or sorted information extremely fast. It makes sense for contacts. I have people, I'm going to sort them in different ways, and here they are. All right, tabs in the wrong place. This is the biggest part. If you're going to use tabs, don't put them at the bottom. That's the biggest thing. It does, it's not natural for Android developers. Uh, obviously, you know, you have designs like Instagram, which are fantastic, uh, and they've taken their iOS paradigm and shifted it over to Android. But if you even think of, if you're in the material design talk yesterday that I gave, imagine transforming this application with the tabs on top and a nice floating action button on the bottom to take a picture. It would really make that 
as your key contact point. I have a lot of Android users, when they see and they talk to me about applications they're using, they see tabs on the bottom and they don't know what the main action button is. And for instance here, the main action for Instagram, of course, is to take a photo. But if you're an Android user, you might not know that coming into the application because it looks like a tab on the bottom in the wrong place. So if you're gonna use tabs, put them at the top. It's how Android wants you to do it anyways. It's built into the framework. Don't confuse your users. Right, Drop-down lists are built in to Android, just like tabs are as well. These are a built-in navigation paradigm. It's just a spinner that's in the top. It's great for sorting information, but it's a little hidden. Sure, there's a little, a little carrot there at the bottom, uh, but when you're really navigating through your content, it's, it's a little bit hard and tricky to, to see uh, what's going on here. And I also like to say, don't abuse the overflow. The overflow is great. We're privileged to have this great overflow action bar. The action bar, you should take all advantage of it as much as possible. It's the biggest paradigm shift uh, since, you know, from 2.0 to 4.0, really. But in instance here, and we're gonna see an example how a Vivo changed their entire application to bring it up to, to speed here, but overflow itself, don't abuse it. It's not where users are looking, right? There's not a menu button at the bottom anymore that they're gonna press and bring up these selection of navigation points. Why would you hide all of your content in your application in a triple line? It doesn't make any sense. And you're, it's not, it's not, uh, it doesn't make sense to your users of your application. I, when I came into this application for the first time, I didn't know where to go. It wasn't presented to me. Right? Uh, when I look at for videos or artists, I'm expecting it to be in tabs or some other drop-down spinner, not in a hidden overflow menu. It doesn't make any sense. I think what happened was really interesting in navigation was a few years ago when, when Facebook, um, they might not have been the first one to introduce the flyout, as we call it, flyout menu. It was this triple hamburger button that's become very popular. You hear me call it, say hamburger all over the place. It's just the triple line. We just called it a hamburger. They, they took the entire screen and they said, well, here's the screen. They have this hamburger button and I want this menu to fly out and push all the content. You'll see this in a lot of applications, especially on iOS. And it was interesting because they might not have been the first ones to do it, but they're obviously one of the most popular applications on any phone in the world. So this allowed us to put our content in front of all of our users right away. They could come in, here's all my friends, here's the activity. And then the other sections, I can easily get to with this one single tap or swipe out from the left. It felt natural in our hands, just swipe over. It made a lot of sense, but it was all custom. There was a lot of work here that wasn't built in under the hood. So while it was great, it wasn't perfect yet. So my issue is that there's simply just way too many ways to navigate in Android. In fact, Android is one of the most complicated but most amazing platforms to develop on. And we need to ensure that we're creating great experiences for our users. When we think about navigation, if there's 18 different ways and 18 different applications that they're all navigating, how do they know where to go when they install your application, the 19th application? We start as developers coming together to select good navigation paradigms and not confuse our users. It's gonna create a better ecosystem for us on Android. So it's easy, right? Because we don't want our users to pull out our shiny application and throw it away. So it's easy. We want them to bask in the sunlight, and we do that with the navigation drawer. It's fantastic. It's the best introduction, the best built-in control in Android that I ever love. I love it to death. It's absolutely fantastic. The idea behind the navigation drawer and why I love it, and why you should choose it, if this clicker works, click, there we go, or how it works, is simple. I described the, fl the, the, the fly-out menu before. It's a very similar paradigm. You have a screen, your content is first. Content is king. That's the entire idea. Then on the left-hand side, you have your icon and your action bar, just like you always know. You have your hamburger button. The hamburger button is very special. It's a special icon inside of, of Android that will actually animate back and forth as you start pulling out and flying the navigation out. So here we can see the user has either done one of two things tap that top hamburger button in the action bar or slid out from the left-hand side. And that allows me to then navigate through. So you might be wondering, James, why should I use that? And I'm glad that you asked. So the navigation drawer, the best part about using inside your applications is that it's gonna be familiar to your users. Google themselves have introduced the, the flyout or the, the navigation drawer into almost every single one of their applications that they have. 
So when, when users of your apps download it from Google Play, they're already using it, so they know this paradigm. It puts content first. I'm gonna reiterate this over and over and over again. The first time we open an application, it should be the content that we wanna drive our users to. It's a standard control, which means we don't have to write any custom code to get this working in our application, besides obviously implementing it, <laughs> right? But you don't have to build this control yourself or take in some additional library that someone else has built. Google has standardized this for the Android platform. It's extremely easy to implement. I'm gonna show everyone here first. I think the highly customizable part is important, but also that's a fragment first approach. And what that means, when we think about Android and navigation, we were activity, activity, activity when we were navigating, pop, 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 pop through our pages. The dip problem here is that an activity is hard to move content, right? So we can't just place an activity inside of something else. With fragments, which was a huge paradigm shift in Android, means that I can take the screen of content and put it anywhere else in my application which means if we're using fragments already in your application, you're gonna easily transition over to the navigation drawer because it's made for fragments because Google themselves wants all developers to be using fragments. So they're faster, they're more efficient, and they save state automatically. So it just makes sense. So let's see how this works. So I'm gonna pull up uh, Xamarin Studio here. I'm also going to launch the Android player, which I forgot to do. There we go, it's boot up KitKat. So I'm here inside of my application. And where the navigation drawer lives uh, is inside of a support package. So bless you. Now, I said it was a standard control, and it's a standard control in the terms that Google created this control for all Android developers, and they said we're gonna put it in a support v4 library, which is important, which means we can use this in all of our applications, all the way back. So this is just exposed via a new J package, uh, or on the component store that you can download. And uh, there's a great article by John Dick, uh, who works on our components team, of how we've standardized and changed uh, the support library, so you always get, get support v4 and v13. Uh, we've really optimized that as well. So we pull in the support library. Now this application that I'm gonna show off is extremely simple. I have three different sections of my application. Let me zoom all the way out. I have my home activity. I just have a list here. These are my key navigation points. I usually put this in a, in a, a string array and I'll reference that so they can be translated correctly. Uh, these are the main sections of the application. I wanna be able to browse all my friends, dive into my friends lists, and then also see my profile. So very simple, these are the, the key contact points. So the navigation drawer is made up of a few things in your Android XML file. So you might be used to laying out a page with a linear layout, I put all my content in there, that's my activity. Well, if, when I dive into the actual resource, we go into my layouts, I'm gonna open up the, the home page here, dive into source. So here's our source. Instead of in deriving from linear layout, we inherit from the support v4 widget drawer layout. The drawer layout knows how to build in this navigation drawer for us. And the unique part here is that it allows us to uh, do two things. We have a main content view, which is a frame layout. So this is, if you've used fragments before, you've probably used frame layouts and you, sw you swap in and out you basically replace this frame layout with an entire fragment, an entire screen. So you stack these up first. This is the first two thing, first one. And then the second thing is the navigation drawer itself. And, and we, we specify this and, and the drawer layout understands. It, it may look weird. So you're like, James, how does it know that there's two items? I can only ever have one item inside of a, a view. If it's a scroll view, it doesn't really make much sense. But the, the drawer layout special, it, it indicates that there's gonna be two items inside of it and the second item here with the layout gravity of start is gonna know that it's gonna come out from the left-hand side. So I, I specify a navigation drawer and this is a list view. What's important is that I've specified it as a list view because I just want it to be a list of items, but it could be anything. 
it doesn't have to be just a list view. You could put a linear layout inside of it. You could have icons. You can do a whole plethora of other things inside there. But obviously, you probably want the list view to be your main contact section of your application. So that's what I've done here. Now, I, I've done a little bit of customization inside of it, such as a divider, transparent. I just don't want any divider inside of it. You don't have to do that. The width, you specify the width. So the width is the main contact. So if I put this inside of a linear layout, there's two important aspects to know, is that when you specify the width of 240 dip, that, that's the correct for portrait on anything, 240 dip. Uh, when you go to tablet, the nice thing about navigation drawer is it automatically scales for you. It knows uh, and has a nice layout when you're on a seven inch or 10 inch tablet. Uh, and what you can do here, instead of specifying it in code, is you could put this in a dimensions re uh, uh, XML file to say when it's in portrait, make it 240, and when it's in landscape, make it 320. So those are your two dimensions, 240, 320, uh, and you can specify those in dimensions. I did it here just as an example in code so we don't have to dive into another XML file. So just as a key point, that's what I'm gonna make. And I've set the background, but you can specify this as any color to match your, your, uh, your application. So let me see if I can just run this first just so we can see it before we dive in to see how I implemented it. And this is my Nexus B4. this up. There we go. I'm going to show you exactly what I did to, to go ahead and grab this. So this is the application. You'll see the three sections of some beautiful monkeys. Here's the Tamarin monkey here. This is the official mascot of Xamarin. In case you were playing the Evolve Quest and you couldn't figure that out, so Tamarin room is what you're looking for. <laughs> so here's our hamburger button up here. Uh, so when I select it up top, you're going to notice a few things that happen. Notice when I open it, it changes the title bar from, from Browse to Home. It gets rid of the Refresh button. I'm giving context here to, to what I'm seeing. So when I'm here, I'm on the Browse screen. I have a Refresh button. I have a nice little grid view here with a little uh, bit of card view. And when I select this, I'm not navigating. Notice that actually when I select different pages, I still have sections selected. And there's, if I hit back now, the application's gone. And that's the functionality that our users are expecting. So when I select this, I'm gonna do a few things. I'm gonna go ahead and say, look, I'm gonna, oh man, can I zoom in here? Let's do that. Oh yeah, there we go. Look at this. Do you see it? Oh. It's very subtle, depending on if I want everyone to look at the hamburger button. But notice as it moves in and out automatically, it's an animation built in, we don't have to do anything about it. It gives context to the opening and closing of the bar. Absolutely love it. Okay, so how did I do this? It's a great question. Everyone's super excited to find out. So the navigation drawer itself is simple. I still inherit from, I have a main activity, but it's a fragment activity. Now, the important part to know is that when you're, since it's in a support v4 library, there's fragments and there's support fragments. So if you use support fragments and v, v4, just, just go all the way back. Once you commit to a support library, you're all in. It doesn't matter. So we can see I'm using all my support v4 app and widget and my usings in here. And w you only really need to pay attention to three things. First is that I have a toggle, and this is something that you have to implement yourself. So while I said it was easy to implement and built out of the box, the toggle, that actually button that I press that controls the opening and closing, uh, you, have to, you do have to implement that. But the, the actual control here is, is a drawer layout and a list view that I'm gonna populate. So this is really simple. I'm not gonna dive too, too much in through the code, but we do some find by IDs, that's great. I get a drawer layout, I get a list view. Oh my goodness, I create an array adapter. That's pretty nice. We've probably done that a million times. Now I'll show you my item, my item menu. So the each item in the menu that's here, it's extremely simple. It's simply a text view with some really nice padding <laughs> in there. So I, I give it the text appearance of list item to make it large. I give it some really nice 14 dip uh, left and right margins or padding. Additionally, this is a very special uh, property. You can set the background to activated background indicator and it makes your text view work like a checkbox uh, almost where it stays selected. So if you, that item in the list view was selected, it'll stay, stay highlighted. Then also give it a minimum height just to make sure that the item heights are very well spaced out. So very simple, just a text view, because that's all I'm displaying. 
we can spice this up though some icons get a little crazy with it right so I have a little click handler on the list view we'll dive into that as well now that I have my drawer layout there's there's four important things I need to do first I need to set a drop shadow and that was something that I, I didn't actually dive into too much so when I'm here inside the application there's actually a drop shadow automatically here for me you can see it right there that's built in I want, to, I want you to notice one thing here is that the navigation drawer automatically is, is dimming the background for me dynamically as well. That's important. You don't have to worry about that. It doesn't push the content. It doesn't shove your content. So Google created this and said we're not going to shove the content off to the side. Content is still visible. So if things are happening in the refresh, in the refreshing in your fragment, it's still visible for you. What's that? It blocks the taps for you. Yeah, it's a light dismiss, correct. Yep. So we have to set up a few things now. We need to set up our toggle. So our drawer needs to know about this toggle, which is what icons do I want to use and what text do I want to display. Uh, for instance, when I, when I long press on this, where is it at? It should pop it up, but maybe it doesn't pop it up in KitKat. Some platforms it'll pop up and say open or close on there. We pass it a few different attributes and let's look at that toggle, because you can implement it yourself. Uh, but I've, I have this base default, and all this code is available on my GitHub. So, so the action, board, uh, the action bar uh, drawer toggle is what we need to implement. And it takes the key activity. So what's my main activity that's going to have this navigation drawer? It wants to get the action drawer. So it, to, it's, all it's doing is initiating events. It says, hey, it was opened. Hey, it was closed. Hey, I was about to be opened. I was sliding, the state changed. It's just uh, implementing some chain, some event handlers, really. In here, so my action bar toggle, if I was to implement a new one, so let's say I created a public class uh, new toggle, and I said action bar drawer toggle, we'll see that, hopefully, we'll get the spinner. We can override a few things, such as on drawer open, on drawer close. So these are methods that I can implement myself to notify the activity that the drawer has happened, uh, the drawer has been toggled. That's all this activity is, is all this is doing. Honestly, it's just implementing some uh, event handlers that I can subscribe to in my main activity. I don't want to dive too much into it because we've probably seen this a thousand times, just creating events that I can subscribe to. And we get the state back and forth. So the toggle here is what's specifying that uh, drawer uh, icon as well. So we, we have set the shadow first, we give it the drawer, the triple hamburger button line, and then we give it some strings for open and close, and that's what's happening. And I want to show you a few things that I do next. So I subscribe to these events that I've just created. Say so when the drawer is closed, I'm going to update the title, the title of my application. And when it's open, I'm going to set it to this drawer title of the current uh, of the actual application, and when it's closed, sorry, when it's closed, this will be the current fragments title. And then I always do this invalidate options menu, and what this does is it's refreshing the actual action bar item, so I'm I can remove and hide icons at at ease. And then all I have to do is I say uh, I'm going to go ahead on this drawer layout, set my drawer listener, so my drawer layout has a toggle, and they know how to communicate back and forth and talk to my activity. Quite simple. And the last thing I need to do here is set my, my home button enabled and up enabled. Now, if you've worked with up and back navigation, you might be wondering why I have to do that, because uh, that's usually the back little carrot, or up carrot, I should, be, I should say. We're going to talk about that later. Uh, but you just have to do that because that's how the framework works. All right, so how do I get into the, how do I actually get this implementing in fragments? Well, whenever my list item is selected, I'm simply just going to switch on the position. I know how I laid out my items in the list. I know my sections. I know my index. So I know if I selected the first index, that I know that's going to be my browse fragment. If it's the, it's the, first, the second one, it's the friends or the profile. And then all I have to say is support fragment manager. I begin a transaction. I replace. And I give it the ID of the content frame, which was inside of here, so here's my content frame. So I'm swapping that. There's nothing there to begin with, and I swap in a fragment. Now at this point, I can do a few things. 
Uh, I set on the list view the selected checked item. So that's why I've set that background and it stays selected. And I update the titles and I manually close the drawer. So when a user selects something, it, so it doesn't have to be a list menu. It could, you could open it and close it at ease in here as well. So I could say open, open drawer, close drawer. I can see if it's open, I can see if it's closed and I can update my application in that state. Right, so this is all the code it is just to implement a navigation drawer. And if you have fragments already, or you're doing something else, they could easily come over into a single application, just like this with the navigation drawer. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is talk about how I hide and show those menus uh, when I, that, the dr icons here. Remember I was invalidating the options menu earlier, so when the invalidate method gets called, our prepare option menu gets called. And in this instance, I can ask if the navigation drawer is open. I ask for the left one. Well, there's a whole other session we could talk about the right drawer. It's actually not a navigation drawer, it's something else. But I ask if this drawer is open. And if so, I actually hide all the items. So I want to give context. I want to make sure when someone opens that navigation drawer, that's all they see. There's no other options or settings or anything like that in it. This is the content. They open that for a reason. They want to navigate. Don't confuse them with other information on the screen. Why would a refresh button be there? It doesn't make any sense, right? Uh, and that's it, and, and that's all the code. There's a few other toggles, so to just synchronize some state back and forth, and that's the code to implement the entire thing. So now as we're navigating through the drawer, uh, here, we can just see that I'm updating at ease, and when I navigate to and from, I'm actually popping a new activity. And this is a choice that you can make, is if you wanna keep swapping fragments and always have your navigation drawer there. I like to say when I select and dive into content, this is a new activity. This is me, it's easier to manage. Fragments sometimes can be difficult to manage, uh, too many of them, but here I can just say, all right, I'm in a new page, and when I hit back, it goes back home. This is my main content of my application. Now I've made it extremely easy for you guys uh, using Visual Studio. How many Visual Studio developers in the room? Quite a few. All right, so I have, uh, when you go to the uh, extensions and updates inside of templates, you can search for Xamarin.Android in the gallery. You'll see the Xamarin Android template pack. I created this myself. You see, there it is. There's the, oops, there's the proof. I totally did it. <laughs> Version 1.2. All right. So when you install this uh, from the gallery, you'll get a new category here. I haven't updated the icon, so I have the old icon. But you're gonna get a few things. You're gonna get, uh, first and foremost, the Android navigation drawer application inside of your other templates here. So if we look here, there's just Android, iOS, and that's the navigation drawer. So I can go ahead and create this application. It's gonna spin it up. And it's gonna do a few things for me. I want to show you just how easy it is. You're like, James, I could go implement this all myself, but I, there has to be an easier way. Great. So I give you a readme file. This is very important. <laughs> so read the readme file. So here. So it says, hey, I, I had to include the old support v4. I'm going to update this with the NuGet package, but go ahead and install that support library that we saw earlier. So first going to remove the Android support library and simply add a new package manager. Go to the package manager here. And we'll see how fast the, the NuGet is today always slow, and I'll type for Xamarin. And it's gonna be on the second page, and we're gonna add that support v4 library. There we go. And now at this point, we'll just compile. This is a little screen mirroring, so this is running on an application I'm just screen mirroring here. Let me go ahead and make sure I clean and rebuild. And what I've done uh, for everyone is included a default uh, navigation drawer, the toggle for everybody, and also all the icons. So if you're using a light or dark theme, I include the icons for both uh, that you can uh, use. So now this is gonna go and package up the application and then deploy it onto the phone here. After it installs for the very first time, API level 15 platform framework. Of course, the most important framework to install in, in a live demo. Got to install the important ones. Oop. There we 
go. Navigation drawer built in for you guys automatically. Just 10 seconds. Yeah, great. <laughs> now, of course, if you're Xamarin Studio, uh, I have an entire GitHub that you can just pull down, <laughs> and it's there. But this is nice, starting any application, I've, I've taken and done all the hard work for you automatically, including changing the title bar so you get an idea of where to go uh, from there. And of course, theme it however you want. So I wanted to show how that is, and that's, that's just on the, the gallery there. So the best part about the navigation drawer is that navigation is better together. I mean, without Wally and, and without Eva, the coming together is the beautiful part of that. So everything is better together, right? And really, when you think about the navigation drawer, those are the main points of your application. Think about Google, the Google Play Store. And when you download it, on the left-hand side, when you pull out the navigation drawer, these are my, my applications, these are my wish lists and my friends. But now, if I was to put apps, games, music, newsstands, all these applications inside of there, that navigation drawer is going to be filled with junk. That's going to be hard for my users to navigate through. So what you can do is you can combine these things together, such as tabs. So don't put multiple filters inside of there, which is my friends, all friends, this and that. Make, combine those together with tabs and other um, navigation paradigms that we've talked about. For instance, you know, Google Play, they use these buttons up top. So they know when someone goes to apps and they go to the store home, they're going to want to dive into a specific category. They don't have this cascading link or cascading list in there. Some efficiency and tip tricks. We can see that something's right and wrong later that I forgot to animate. But the most important part we talked about, when you open the drawer, hide icons. When you close it, bring your icons back. And I showed you how to do that. Uh, make sure a good tip is since we can manually open and close the drawer, set a, boole uh, set a Boolean in your settings, in your shared preferences to say first run. If it's the first run of your application, if you want a pretty good startup first run experience, open the drawer for them right away. They'll get to see all of the sections of your application. Don't hide it. Let them know that it's there. And then obviously don't do that every single time afterwards. Just do it once. And then let them put, them put your user in control. Most importantly, use standard icons. On the Android Asset um, Studio, if you've never used that, I can pull that up as well. Uh, they give you the standard hamburger buttons to use. Don't use the wrong hamburger button, because you might be using the new fancy navigation drawer, but uh, you know some of these apps that you see up here are using incorrect uh, navigation uh, drawer icons, and it's going to confuse the user. Because is that an overflow? Is that going to do something else? Uh, for instance, this fresh music thing, why is this an overflow menu on the left-hand side? That doesn't make any sense. Important, though, is that Android L is coming out and Material Design. Um, they've decided to move back to a a, a, an iOS look and feel, apparently, for the hamburger button. So be aware that things are changing for Android L. Uh, and you'll see this in some of their applications that Google themselves have been updating. So compatibility-wise, how is this compatible all the way back? Well, luckily enough, uh, you can combine this with the Action Bar Compatibility V7 framework. So if you do have to support Gingerbread, I'm sorry, but you can totally do it. It's totally fine. And I have, an ex I have a full example on my GitHub of, of how this works. A few gotchas, though. The problem is there's a few variables that were introduced uh, in uh, API level 11 that are not available in API uh, 7, 7, for instance, such as gravity. Gravity doesn't exist. It was introduced in 11, so you use gravity compat. Easy enough. I showed you that fancy activated background indicator that doesn't exist uh, in V7. So what you have to do is you have to have a, a special checked text box, which is what it sounds like. It's a checked text box. It's like a check bo check box, and you have a custom drawable. Full sample. I'm not going to dive into it. It's all on my GitHub, and I'll link at the end here. Xamarin Forms. Everyone's probably wondering, how do I do this in Xamarin Forms? James, I saw that you were doing this in your beautifully crafted Xamarin Evolve application. Thanks everyone for for pumping up my ego. It is fantastic. Thank you. Wrote that myself. So let's see how I did that. So I have a Forms application here. Now I've, I've shoved all the code. You don't want to do this, obviously, but I've shoved all the code inside of just an Android application where I've added the uh, support libraries here. Let me actually restore some packages, apparently. So the main activity should look pretty familiar. I have an Android activity, which is a Xamarin Forms Android activity. I have my init and my get main page. For demo purposes, I've put my get main page here. Master detail page is your navigation drawer. It just is. That's how it works. The navigation drawer, you can set the icon to your hamburger button. 
It won't animate, animate quite yet. I'm working with the team on that. But it'll hug the side so it'll look very native and familiar to your users. Because it is native. So I'm doing a few things here. My master page is my flyout menu. My detail page is any of my fragments or sub pages that I'm selecting. So I have a menu page. And then let's look at the menu page. So it looks very familiar. I'm creating uh, a menu item. So my menu item is very simple. I have a, a title and an option. And I have some enums, home, friends, profiles. And I've customized my home cell just a little bit. I don't use a default text cell out of the box. I customize this even per platform. I like to give it on iOS a very fancy Helvetica new thin, because that's what all the cool kids are using. Uh, and I bind it up here to the label. So very simple, just uh, put it in a stack panel with some nice padding around as well. Hopefully this isn't mind blowing for anybody. Uh, but uh, the, the main activity says, or is that mi mi this page says, I'm gonna create an observable collection of menu items. So maybe I start with none, I go off and I load it up once my user's logged in, I present the menu items, and I just add a few items to that list uh, here. I'm gonna pass in a reference to my master detail page so I can reference that later. So I can actually push and pop uh, to the master. And then I create my list view. Of course here we can see I'm setting some, some title, the draw, drawer, little triple line for me, and my background color as well, just to a, a darker background. List view, you could also do this in XAML, it's totally fine. And then I have a, a selected item here. Very similar to when I was swapping in and out fragments. What I say here is, I say when I select an item, as long as it's a menu item, as that's what's coming back, I'm gonna pass the option, where am I going to, right? And I switch case on that. Now the interesting part here is that each of my detail page is a navigation page. So you can see I cache all these around in memory. So I come up top and I have a friends page, I have a fro profile page, and I have a home page here. And of course I use my little if null to go ahead and create a new one. And in this instance, I'm simply creating everything in line. So the, the idea here is that my master page is just a content page. And I wanna be able to navigate through the application. So I have multiple navigation pages. It's very similar to iOS um, if you're using tabs, that each tab would have a navigation to navigate through. So that's all I do here inside of it. And that's the entire application. And I cache these around so it saves its state, almost just like a fragment. So if I run this application, here, there's some beautiful lorem ipsum. There's home, and I get a nice flyout navigation, and I can swap back and forth, and I can do a little bit more customization out of the box here. But see, there's a few intricacies here, such as, you know, things aren't highlighted or selected and the navigation bar aren't moving, but we get the same effect, and it's gonna be familiar to our users here with just a, a few, uh, you know, 50, maybe, what is this, 100 lines of code, not bad. And most of that's just creating the new pages. So it's very simple to implement even in Xamarin forms. That was a demo. So up navigation, I got 10 minutes left. I'm so excited to talk about up navigation today because up navigation isn't back navigation. When you hit the back button, it should go back. When you hit the up button, it should go up. Does that make sense? No, you're supposed to say no. It doesn't make any sense. So I was talking to uh, Peter from Google last night, and he said this is one of the largest struggles that Android developers have to overcome. It's not the navigation drawer, navigation paradigms. It's my designer has given me an iOS design, and there's a back button. So I'm assuming that this button on the top left is the back button. It is not the back button. That is the up button. And this is what it looks like. Right? The up button has an up arrow. It looks like a back arrow, but it's definitely an up arrow. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> it's up navigation. This is what it means, back versus up. What am I talking about? Well, as I navigate through my application, I have three screens. These chairs are my screens. Home page, detail page, deep dive page, right? I start on my home page. I go here. I hit the back button. Guess what? I go back. When I hit here, and I go to another page, if I hit back, I go back. If I go here, if I hit up, I go all the way back to my home. Just let my users go home. It's beautiful, it's one of the most powerful things that we can do in Android. And the reason we do this 
is because other applications can launch our application. Remember that. And Android's the most powerful platform for mobile development. I simply love it. If I launch my users, so if you launch my application via an intent, you say, James, I have this. I want you to create a brand new, uh, let's say, email. Let's say I'm an email client. I would like to draft a new email, and you pass me an intent with some extra content. I'm going to land here. I create my, my intent, my activity starts up, I'm on this page, which is amazing. Now what happens when my user presses back? Does anyone want to guess? Right, okay, let's, let's do it. Does it. Raise your hand, does it go to my application? Or does it go, so who thinks when the user presses back, it'll go to my application? What happens, uh, who thinks when they hit back, it'll go to your application? You're correct. Half the time, sometimes I'll just go to the home screen. <laughs> so <laughs> the up allows you to specify a home page. What intent, what is my parents of this activity? When my user presses up, where would I like to go? When you hit back, when you launch my application and you say I'm here, I have no back stack. When I hit back, the user presses back, it's gonna go back into your application. Because that's how Android is handling the back navigation stack. I don't have a home or this button or this. When they hit back, it goes all the way back to your application. But my user, your user, might want to stay in my application. They might want to send another email. So let them do that by implementing the up button. As a developer, your application, my application, it's important that I do this and not confuse the user. So it's very simple. And we can see the, how it works here because you might be navigating across and how it goes back. So it's really simple. All you have to do here, if I'm going to go back to my uh, navigation drawer sample, the very first one, I have an activity. I have a friend activity and a home activity. And this is what you have to specify. Parent activity. What is its type, which is home view. Now, you can do additional properties in metadata if you have to support older versions, because the parent activity was added in a newer version of Android. And you can specify specifically what this, the support parent activity is and specify a value here. And honestly, that's it. Besides specifying uh, these important properties, on the action bar, you set display home as up enabled and set home button enabled. That's it. That gives you that little up arrow, right? There. And now you can do a few things, which is powerful because if, if you're navigating inside your application, the system will handle this for you automatically. If you want to do a little bit uh, more interesting things, just like a user selects a refresh button and you get an options item selected, you'll get it for the home. You'll get an android.resource.id.home, and you can do a few things, and all the code is here. Your navigation utils, you can say navigate up from same task, and it'll figure out the back stack for you. If you're being launched from an additional activity, there's some code that will recreate the back stack for you automatically if it doesn't exist. I even say don't do this. So you never want to launch a new activity. You're using the navigation utils for them to create the back stack, Android to create the back stack automatically for you. It's really powerful. But out of the box, all the most important part is set your parent activity. This is the parent where when they press up, it needs to go. Don't make it the previous page. Just make it your home. So now, the interesting part, if I dive back into the first example, and I go to browse, as I select these monkeys, I'm launching a new activity. So if I press back, I go back. If I hit home, I go home. It makes so much sense. Does everyone get it now? Beautiful. Mission accomplished. So let's make sure in the last few minutes that we don't end up going the wrong direction and messing this all up. So choose wisely. The navigation drawer is wonderful and I love it, but it may not be for everybody. For instance, here's an application, not to be named, that I've grayed out here, that, that uh, has two options, explore and profile. That doesn't make any sense. It's a lot of white space. And really, Explore just goes to the home page. So what if you did this? Look, I fixed your application. Now, I've put it inside of the, the overflow menu because these are sections that aren't regularly navigated to. Put things that are important in the navigation drawer. Here's that Vivo application again with a messed up overflow. Here's what it looks like today. Beautiful. Excellent work. Besides that, they have a search button in the top right. But they do put the Chromecast button because you can Chrome anytime. You can cast any size, which is great. So since they use fragments already, you can easily swap these out. So if you're already doing fragment-based, congratulations, great. 
make beautiful applications with the navigation drawer. On my GitHub, this is the link. You can find links to everything. You have, I have samples, all the source code. Everything I write is open source in the world. Zam.nav drawer. I have an action bar compatibility, MVVM cross, this standard, Xamarin forms, and a link to the gallery as well. I love the navigation drawer. Everyone should use it. It's fantastic, and thank you. And I think I have one minute for questions. So I'll go in the back, the first one to raise hand. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> the nav utils that you mentioned, or was in your code, where is that from? So that's in a support library. It's just automatically brought in for you. Yep, so nav utils. I can deep dive later into nav utils if you want, and I just didn't have enough time. So, up here. Oh, just search for xamarin.android in the gallery. Yeah. So the question was, where does the gallery thing live? Just in, when you go to the gallery, just search for xamarin android, it's the only one. <laughs> one there's a Google Glass one as well. Yeah, or just, it's also on the GitHub page. And then a question there? Last question. Uh, Apple said not using the... Apple said not using the drawer pattern. Is yep. it we should not use it in iOS app? What, what's your thought about it? That's a good question. The question, in case you didn't hear, was iOS versus Android navigation. Uh, the flyout navigation is still there. It's, it's the default. It's not built in, right? We built our own for Xamarin Forms, for instance. You'll see a lot on the, uh, on the component store. Oh, no, it's a tricky one. I know uh, tabs are usually primary navigation on iOS. Flyout menu, I think, is fantastic. I say use it, go for it. I think it makes sense. The intricacy on iOS is the swipe back, because that's a new paradigm. We don't have to worry about that on Android, because we have a back button. Makes sense. Yeah. So you can swipe back, which I actually do like on iOS, but the problem is, what happens if I try to swipe back? Does the navigation drawer open? So now, iOS has a lot of fragmentation issues in their, in their navigation. Some are putting the, the, the hamburger button on the right-hand side, and it flies in from the right, which is a little confusing. Sometimes when you hit it, it does this weird like zoom out thing. Uh, it's a tricky and interesting thing. Uh, see what your designers want, basically. You know, on Android, just navigation drawer. <laughs> if it's right for you. Like I said, it might not be right for all applications. But if you have more questions, I'll be around. I have some one-on-ones, but after that, I'll, I'll be around uh, all day. So thank you again.